Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome to another question and answer session. This is physiology portion of the MRCS. This is the question. A 48 years old man undergoes a right hemicolectomy for a large cecal poly. In the immediate postoperative period, which of the following which of the following physiological process described below is least likely to occur? So first of all, uh, here we can see the right hemicolectomy for the cecal polyp. So uh, following any operation, this condition is sympathetic activity activation. An immediate postoperative day, which physiological process described below least likely occurs. That means not occurs postoperatively. Following any operation, all the sympathetic parameters in our body and sympathetic activity in our body increased. So we have to find out all the parameters which are compatible with this sympathetic nervous system activation feature. Here the options. Options are glycogenolysis, increased production of acute phase protein, increased cortisol production, bronchoconstriction, release of nitric oxide by vessel. So we have to find out one of the options which is not occurs following any operation. So let's see, uh, here we can see the metabolic response to injury or the sympathetic activity after any injury or trauma or surgery because surgery itself a trauma. So any event occurs after trauma, this same event occurs after the operation. So it is a uh, snapshot from Bailey and Love surgery book. Uh, it is the metabolic response to injury. Here we can see this is the response to injury or surgery or trauma. Here we can see the response of surgical injury after uh, past uh, 24 to 48 hours. And here we can see some important parameters happens. And uh, following any injury or after any operation, usually we uh, our body wants more, more glucose, more, more energy product and more inflammatory product and let's see the changes first of all here we can see the adenocorticotropic hormone growth hormone they increases and following them from the adipocyte lipolysis occurs that means a lipid breakdown occurs and the metabolic product be ready in the blood for use in our body then here we can see the from the adrenal gland adrenaline and cortisol also increase and it increases hepatic gluconeogenesis that means the glucose production for ready in the blood because we need more more food during any emergency condition and here we can see the skeletal muscle protein degradation here we can see the from uh, protein the muscle protein also broken down and the glucose or amino acid uh, sorry amino acid or uh, another end product of the protein they are released then from the pancreas glucagon glucose is released and the hepatic acute phase protein synthesis occurs so that means this is the acute phase protein and some important inflammatory markers such as here we can see the interleukin 1 tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin 6 8 they are released and they causes pyrexia and some important parameters reduce such as the insulin insulin like growth factor 1 testosterone and t3 so insulin insulin like growth factor 1 testosterone and t3 they are reduced but all other parameters increase and increase and it is uh, very easy to remember that any food material it usually increase that means the end product of glucose uh, that means the glucose amino acid fatty acid they are increased so broken down of the their stores such as the glycogen such as lipid muscle protein so the large molecule they are released into the blood and ready for use here you can see the response to the surgery First of all, sympathetic nervous system activation and sympathetic nervous system activation. Here we can see the noradrenaline from sympathetic nerves and adrenaline from the adrenal medulla. And blood diverted from skin and visceral organ. 
bronchodilation here we can see this point is very very important because during any surgical procedure we need more more oxygen so for this condition the bronchus should be dilated to enter more of the blood into the lung alveolar and exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the alveoli and oxygen can reach more more in the different parts of the organ uh, of the body and then uh, reduce intestinal motility so in emergency condition we need more energy for our body but this time intestinal motility reduced and increase glucagon and glycogenolysis and insulin reduced that means for increasing glucose in the blood while the event occurs heart rates and myocardial contractility increase because we need more more blood in the peripheral organ including the central and peripheral organ so heart rate increases and the metabolic and myocardial contractility also increase and here we can see acute phase response such as the tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin 1 to 6 interferon and prostaglandin they are also released excess cytokines may cause SARS that means the systemic inflammatory response syndrome cytokines increase the release of acute phase protein and some important endocrine response and vascular response also occur due to metabolic response to the injury here in endocrine function here we can see the from the hypothalamus pituitary and adrenal <coughs> axis different <coughs> hormone release here we can see the adrenocorticotropic hormone and cortisol production increase increase protein breakdown increase blood glucose level aldosterone increases sodium reabduction vasopressin increases water reabduction and causes vasoconstriction so uh, during a metabolic response to injury here we can see the blood glucose level increase blood amino acid level increase blood fat fatty acid it also increase then the blood sodium content increase water content also increase so during any uh, injury or any metabolic response to injury the glucose amino acid fatty acid that means the carbohydrate protein and fat content increase in the blood also the sodium and water increase into the blood and all the other hormone or chemical substances which uh, is responsible for decreased blood glucose they are usually reduce in this condition and vascular changes here you can see nitric oxide production and causes vasodilation in certain area in which organ there need more more so nitric oxide this causes vasodilation in certain area and increase blood supply in that area then <laughs> platelet activating factor it enhances cytokine response Prostaglandin produce vasodilation and induce platelet aggregation. So finally, which is least likely in case of metabolic response after the surgery or trauma, here we can see bronchoconstriction. It is not true because any type of trauma, any type of surgery, or uh, any type of sympathetic activity, they need more and more oxygen. So bronchodilation should occur there. Other options here, such as the glycogenolysis. That means the glucose breakdown and glucose increase in the blood, increase production of acute phase protein, increase cortisol production and release of nitric oxide. They all are true regarding the metabolic response to injury or deploying any surgery. So here this is not bronchoconstriction, it should be bronchodilation. Thank you all.